All right, Yuna. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Caldwell. Before we get started, I would like to direct your attention to the right side of your screen. You can download the MyProLapse mobile app anytime during the presentation using the QR codes on the right. It is free and available on both Android and iOS. Also, please be aware that this presentation may contain graphic images. The pelvic floor muscles line the bottom of the pelvic cavity, forming a hammock that supports the pelvic viscera. If the pelvic floor dysfunctions or becomes weak, you can get pelvic floor disorders, which include urinary incontinence, fecal incontinence, and pelvic organ prolapse. Here is a typical presentation of the female anatomy within the pelvis and the corresponding location of the pelvic floor. For comparison, in a pelvic organ prolapse, weakening of the pelvic floor will cause the organs to eventually bulge into the vaginal wall and outside the vaginal opening. If we focus on just the vaginal opening, this is what a typical vaginal opening looks like when the patient is relaxed. When the patient is asked to bear down like they are defecating, this is called the Valsalva maneuver. And if they have a prolapse, it will appear like this, with a vaginal bulge appearing outside the vaginal opening. Now it should be noted that there are many types of pelvic organ prolapse depending on which organ is bulging into the vagina. Enterostele is one type of pelvic organ prolapse in which a peritoneal sac containing the small intestine herniates into the vaginal wall. It is usually discovered in elderly females who have given multiple births. And enterostele is strongly associated with hysterectomy because the surgery itself predisposes individuals for enterostele. The next image may be a bit graphic, but here is a patient presentation of enterostele. You can see the small intestine bulging into the vagina in this sagittal MRI. Due to lack of public awareness of prolapse, there are a lot of misconceptions about the vaginal bulge you see here. Patients might think it's an infection because it smells funny, or they might think it's cancer. And studies have found that these patients experience a lot of anxiety, stress, shame, and fear surrounding their condition, along with decreased body image and quality of life. In addition, they don't feel comfortable discussing this very common issue with their providers, and it prevents them from seeking medical advice. Despite the increasing prevalence and the complicated anatomy, there are few resources to educate patients on their prolapse. As a result, the aims of our project are to one, develop an interactive mobile app to assist healthcare providers in educating post-hysterectomy women on the 3D anatomy of enterocele, and two, assess the educational value of the app as a visual aid during counseling and its ability to decrease patient anxiety and increase patient understanding. We first started with resource development. We obtained a de-identified CT urogram and MRI pelvis of a female diagnosed with enterocele post hysterectomy. This was approved by the Colorado Multiple Institutional Review Board. Then we segmented the models with 3D slicer. Here you can see the bony structures and a close-up of the pelvic viscera. These are isolated views of the small intestine, the vagina, and the pelvic floor muscles. Then the models were smoothed and refined in ZBrush Core. And afterwards, the smooth models were textured and animated in Maya. We took the animation made in Maya and incorporated everything into Unreal Engine 4 to create the app itself. Unreal Engine is the same game engine that created Fortnite, which is apparently a pretty popular game these days. The app currently supports both English and Spanish. You can rotate, pan, zoom, and toggle the visibility of the models. And as an extra bonus, we also included tips on how to prevent a prolapse. Once resource development was finished, we received feedback from 15 healthcare providers at Denver Health. Shapir Wilk tests were performed and the provider outcomes were found to be non-parametric. We asked the providers whether this mobile app is needed for patient education in the clinic. They responded to a visual analog scale by adjusting the slider to indicate their agreement, ranging from not needed at all to essential. And to look at the responses, responses statistically, the responses were assigned a value of zero to 100, so that not needed at all was considered a zero and essential was considered 100. Overall, based on the median of 100, the providers felt that the mobile app was needed for patient education. 
We also asked the providers whether they would use this mobile app to explain enterocele to their patients. They responded to a visual analog scale ranging from never to always. And overall, based on the median of 100, most of the providers would use this app during the clinic. We also asked the providers whether they would recommend this mobile app to another provider. They responded to a visual analog scale ranging from very unlikely to very likely. And overall, based on the median of 100, most of the providers would recommend the app to another provider. Based on the comments by the providers, we improved the user interface of the app by adding a zoom slider and a reset button. The next step is to evaluate patients, but this is currently halted due to COVID-19. But to summarize, patients diagnosed with enterocele will be randomized into two equal groups. One is the standard counseling group, where the provider conducts routine counseling as usual. And the other group is the mobile app group, where the provider uses the mobile app as a visual aid during counseling. Patients will fill out pre and post intervention surveys assessing anxiety and understanding. So far, it seems that the mobile app could be a valuable resource for healthcare providers. Positive provider feedback suggests the app has considerable potential as a patient education resource during counseling. Future patient data collection will investigate whether this is true by assessing the educational value of the app and whether it decreases patient anxiety and increases patient understanding. In addition, future iterations of the app will include other types of prolapse. Overall, we are hoping that this app will increase public awareness and improve communication between patient and provider by enhancing patient education of post-hysterectomy pelvic organ prolapse. I would like to thank my committee members and everyone who assisted me with this project. Thank you for listening and please let me know if you have any questions. You know, this is Janet Corral. Thank you so much for such a clear and well-organized presentation. Uh, I really appreciated how organized you were throughout your entire capstone project and really did a fantastic job of mentoring up to your committee. And that was in terms of, for those who are unfamiliar on the call with mentoring up, you know, coming to us with what the agenda was and uh, making sure you were meeting all your timelines and deadlines. This is phenomenal work. And thank you for making the app accessible, free. Uh, that matters so much, especially to the populations you were partnering with at Denver Health. Um, one of my questions for you goes back to the experimental design. This was really well thought out, but specifically this piece of being in COVID, we are all sympathetic and appreciate being unable to um, check this with patients. It looks like COVID you know, might last a little bit longer and we don't want to um, overtax our OB-GYN colleagues, but they are beginning to do telehealth visits. Is there a way that some of this validation could be done through telehealth? I think um, it may be possible. Um, I do know that uh, my mentor and I are still discussing what exactly to do going forward. And we haven't exactly decided anything yet because we're still looking um, to see what Denver Health um, is gonna require of the urogynecology clinic. Um, and so I think we're still just waiting to hear back from Denver Health about that. Thank you. I look forward to seeing the next phase of this project. Very well done. Awesome, thanks so much, Yuna. Um, we don't have any time for other questions, but I can't wait to see what patients think about your project and that important resource for them. So.